On overnight, I believe in reason and common sense. Leith Van Onselen from Macro Business with a treasury of common sense. Common sense never goes out of style. Good morning, Leith, Chief Economist of the MB Fund, MB Super, co founder of Macro Business, and we're talking really the treasury of common sense. Let's go for the common sense. Leith, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, Mike. Yourself? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. Australia's population grew by 660,000 in the year to September 23, but over the same period, we only added 155,600 homes. So uh, the big gap continues. It does, mate. And uh, some data that came out yesterday suggests it's gotten even worse because we've got over 700,000 international students in the country, which is a new record according to new data from the Home Affairs, Department of Home Affairs. And we've also got about 2.4 million temporary migrants in the country as well, which is also a record. So if anything, that, that data, which is for se- September last year, is probably uh, understating things. But this is why the rental vacancy rates still have to a record low of about 1%, why rents are soared by, you know, 38% since the pandemic and why, you know, we've got people living in group housing and being thrown onto the streets and et cetera. And the funny thing about this, Mike, is, a whole bunch of lobby groups have come out and they've they've tried to say, look, the solution is actually more immigration. So just last week, the Master Builders Australia CEO, Danita Warren, was uh, one of a number of people who who came out and said, we need quick, smart 90,000 builders and tradies in the country to build homes. The ridiculous thing about this is that obviously if we imported those 90,000 construction workers, we'd also need to probably supply up to 90,000 homes for them to accommodate them and their families. And This would then mean we need more nurses, we need more teachers to teach their kids, we need more infrastructure in general, and we need more of just about every other service that these migrants require. So it's all a bit of a, you know, dog chasing its tail, Ponzi economy here where the solution always seems to be more immigration. And it's also just another example of why mass immigration is utterly useless in alleviating skill shortages across the economy because all it really represents is a futile game of whack-a-mole. And just to highlight the point, Australia's population has grown by an unbelievable 8.2 million people this century so far. That's 44% on the back of high immigration. Yet we've got worse skill shortages than ever. And all that really tells you is that the solution to the problem, if anything, actually creates more problems. You know, obviously our skill shortages are worse than they've ever been. The nation's productivity stinks. And we've got shortages of everything, homes, infrastructure, services, a whole lot of things. So, you know, the solution always seems to be, let's just let's just import more and that'll solve it when it's actually the main problem that's actually caused this. And it's not just builders, Mike, it's a whole bunch of other areas. I mean, you know, they're always saying we need more engineers. Well, guess what? 60% of engineers in Australia were, were born overseas and only half of them actually work as engineers. So we've got 50% of foreign born engineers that are actually working in low-skilled service jobs like driving Ubers, which just tells you that you know the, 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 the migration system that we've got isn't meeting its purpose. It's not bringing the right people. And then it's just creating you know all these pressures left, right and centre, whether it's on housing or you know any, everything else. And we just constantly keep putting in more and more, hoping that it's going to fix the skill shortages. And it's, yet it's making the skill shortage worse because we've been running this same program for about 20 years And it just keeps, the problem just keeps getting worse. It's pretty much hardwired into a Ponzi scheme mentality that you just have to keep on doing it and hope it doesn't collapse on your watch. And you talk about the kind of people we need to be building domiciles, for example, and they're not in the right jobs. Is this purely and simply down to inept management? Look, the Masters Builders Association CEO, Danita Warren, does have a point in that basically our migration system is way too heavily weighted towards skills we don't need, right? That, that, that's basically what she's been saying. So the way it works is most of our migrants come in through the international you know, student program. So, so they come through, they study as students. Most of them want to end up living here. So they end up doing courses. Problem with it is they're always university type courses. And they also end up cheating out, out students that actually aren't very skilled. So some data that came out recently during the migration review that just uh, was released earlier this year showed that more than half, so 51% of international student graduates with a bachelor's degree that had been in the country for three years were working in low skill level four or level five jobs. So what that is, 
we break down professions into five classes. So level one's the highest. That's like, you know, managers and your accountants and your high professionals. Mm. And level five are the, are the lowest, which is like careers, postal delivery workers, cleaners. And level four is bar attendants, baristas, waiters. It turns out that 51% of international student graduates that have been here for at least three years with bachelor's degrees are working in those two lowest profile jobs. So these are supposed to be skilled workers. So we've gone to university, done a degree, done a bachelor's, et cetera, and end up just working, you know, waiting tables, driving Ubers and all that sort of thing. That's certainly not delivering skills we need. And just last month, uh, the Committee of Economic Development Australia released a report that showed that recent migrants earn more than 10% less than their Australian-born counterparts. And they've become increasingly likely to work in low productivity, low paying firms. So again, this is another problem. And then you know, another survey from the from the uh, Graduate Outcomes Survey that gets released every year shows that international student graduates earn way less than Australian-born graduates. Unemployment rates are higher, their, particip- their participation rates are lower. Just one final insult, data compiled by the Grattan Institute earlier in the year showed that migrants tend to work everywhere but construction. 32% of Australian workers are foreign-born, but only 24% of workers work in building construction. Uh, you know, sorry, only 24% overseas born workers work in building construction. So they're way more likely to go into these other areas. So that, so that sort of gets to Danita Warren's point. We do need more to work in construction, for example, but the problem with it is the numbers are just way too high, which is why I've got a housing shortage and why I've got crush lighting everywhere. And then also they're weighted towards areas we don't need them. So they end up working these sort of low value, low skill, low productivity services industries when they were, you know, supposed to work as engineers or accountants, or they, or they studied to do something else, they end up just working in these low-value jobs, not in their area of expertise. And all this really tells you is if you're going to if you're going to solve the housing crisis, there's two things we need to do, which is obviously we need to reduce the the, the volumes because because we can't have you know 550,000 migrants arriving in a year like we just did. That just overwhelms everything, which is you know uh, which is why we've got a housing crisis. And second, the migration system is so poorly targeted; it does need to be flipped around. So we need to have a, run a much smaller program and make sure it's genuinely skilled and we have more people who have got real practical skills, whether that's, you know, tradesmen, that sort of thing. Because like, those are the areas where the economy is absolutely screaming out for workers. We don't need more, you know, uh, more Uber drivers. We don't need, need more bartenders. We don't need more people working cafes. All that stuff isn't doesn't really help. Uh, I'm not trying to disparage those people, but that's not where we that's not where the problem is in the economy. So why – yeah, go on. Yeah, so, so the, the, the whole system is, you know, we're supposed to we, – they, they say we're having this migration to solve, to solve the skill shortage problem. But again, we've grown the, we've grown the population by 8.2 million people, 44% so far this century, enormous growth, and the skill shortages are worse than they've ever been, which just tells you that the system's not working, so we've got to change the system. So why is it that the people who can make a difference when it comes to the distribution of skills, for example, are not reacting to these very obvious pressures? I think the business lobbies, for example, they just love big migration. So they they don't really care where it comes from because obviously if you've got more people, that's more customers to sell to. So, you, you know, you, you, you grow your customer base, easy way to grow. So if you think about it from a Harvey Norman's perspective, right, Harvey Norman runs a massive retailer. Mm-hmm. You grow the population by 1.5% to 2% or currently it's 2.5% every year. That's just easy growth, right? It's easy way to boost your revenues, make more money, et cetera. And that applies to the banking lobby, uh, you know, developers, all that sort of thing. At the same time, the more migrants you can get, it also, uh, you know, increases competition in the workplace for, you know, for, for jobs, and then that, that also puts downward pressure on wages. So if you're, if you're a business lobby, you love it. If you're the property lobby, you love it. Um, but certainly we need, you know, there, there should be a lot more focus on genuine skills that we need, and, and we, we need to basically take a step back and say this is not working because we've done this for 20 years. We've had a 20-year experiment with this, and nobody, nobody living in Sydney or Melbourne or any other major city can tell you that their living standards have gone up in the last 20 years. That it's a, that those cities are a better place to live, you know. That it's easy to get around, um, you know. Housing's more affordable, you know. All, all those all those things have gotten worse. There's there's no doubt about it. You know, na- nowadays young people have been forced to live in you know shoebox apartments. Oft, often they're 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 shoddily built, 
because they've been slapped up so quickly to try and keep up with this population growth. So the whole system is not working and it's not alleviating the skill shortages. And the whole notion that we need more migrants that, to, to solve the skill shortage, which has been the lie that we've run for 20 years, needs to be thrown on its head because it's actually causing skill shortages because we're getting the wrong people doing the wrong jobs you know, in areas we don't need. It seems to be so obvious and unavoidable, and yet we continue to do the same thing. Appreciate your time and comments as always. Thank you for that. Thanks, Mike. Speak to you next time. Leith Van Onselen, Chief Economist at the MB Fund.